Hello and welcome to Python programming practice. In this episode, we are going to be covering leet code number six called zigzag conversion. This is classified as a medium problem, so it might take some doing to get through it. So I'll, I'll start by reading the problem description here. The string PayPal is hiring is written in a zigzag pattern on a given number of rows like this. You may want to display this pattern in a fixed font for better legibility. And it's showing us the string, but it's in this weird configuration where it goes pay, pay, pal is hiring up and down across several rows in kind of a zigzag configuration. And then it says we're supposed to and then read line by line. So instead of doing the zigzag, we're reading it this way. And that's what this output string is like. So basically, write the code that will take a string and make this conversion given a number of rows. So we're given some string, I guess, that's in a zigzag configuration. And we have to output the string that would be made by taking each row of that zigzag configuration and then concatenating them together. Let's look at some of the examples here. So example one, we're given that same string we just looked at with the number of rows three. And then the output is each of the rows in order instead of in the zigzag configuration. And now we're given another example with num rows four with the same string it looks like. And that's just breaking it out over longer zigzags. So now it goes up to four rows and that alters how many rows across there are. So that's going to end up changing the final output string too. And the third example is just an input of A only with one row. And in that case, we just output A. Um, they, they could have actually made this even longer and you just output the input because if it's only run ro one row, there's no zigzags happening. And in that case, we could just output the, the input string. Um, and the constraints here are input is going to be between length one and 1000. The string will only consist of English letters, lowercase and uppercase, along with potentially commas and periods. And the number of rows in the zigzag pattern will also be between one and 1000. So I suppose it's possible we could be past something that's like a column where every single letter is in its own row. So to start tackling this problem, I have pulled up a whiteboard with some letters on it here in a zigzag pattern, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, etc. And we'll use this to think about how we can approach this problem. So if we're passed in a string like this with three rows as the target, we're going to have to figure out how we can basically make this kind of construction and loop through the string to come up with this result where we're going down to three rows then we go back up like this, down to three rows, go back up like this, etc., until the end of the string. And then we have to somehow keep track of the fact that all of these positions are associated with what's going to be the beginning of the string or the first row. And then all of these positions are going to be in the middle of the string or the second part of it. And then all of these letters end up being the kind of third row position, and those are gonna be at the end. And then the string that we have to output for this is everything in row one, and then concatenate everything in two, and then concatenate everything in three. So basically what we're going to have to do here is we're gonna somehow have to keep track of everything in each of the rows that has to be created. So we might wanna make something like a dictionary that's going to have a different substring entry for each one of these things. And then we're going to have to figure out how to loop through the string and keep track of what row we're currently in. And then as we go along, we can add to the substrings. So let's look at an example of what this might look like for this problem. We could say initialize an empty dictionary with an entry for row one, row two, and row three. So here's our empty dictionary. And then we can loop through our string and say, okay, we're looking at A, what, which row is A in? And then we'd say, okay, A is in row one. 
And then somehow we'd have to know the next letter B should be in row two. And then we'll say, okay, B is added to row two. And then we'll go to C and we'd have to keep track of C is supposed to be in row three. Then we go up to D, that should be in row two. And then we'll just keep adding on to these as we go along. And then we'll end up with all the substrings we need and we can just concatenate them together in order. So the difficult part will probably be figuring out how to loop through the string and know which row each letter is in at the time that we see it. And how I can do that is probably just having some counter that keeps track of what the current row is. And then every letter we look at will increment the row by one. And then when we get to the last row, we'll just start decreasing it by one. So we'll say we'll start at one, two, three. Oh, three is the maximum length. So we should start decreasing now two, one, one is the beginning. Now we should start increasing two, three, etc. So we'll have to have some counter for the row that's increasing and decreasing based on whether we're zigzagging in this direction or this direction. So we'll probably have to have some indicator that's telling us, are we currently moving in the down direction or up direction? But that should be enough in terms of the intuition to start coding up a solution to this problem. So I've pulled over to the code editor now so we can start writing up our solution. You can see we're past a function called convert and we're given the input string and also an integer that specifies the number of rows. Now to start off with, we should probably handle the case where we're past just a single row that we need to return. If the number of rows is one, then we don't have to do any zigzagging and we can just return what we were given. So if num rows is actually equal to one we basically don't have to do anything and we'll just return the input string now if that's not the case we actually have to handle the problem so we'll start by initializing the map that will keep track of what's in each row that we will put together at the end so and we're going to need a row for each row in the row length so that was given to us by num rows so for row in range, we'll say one to num rows plus one. So I'm, I'm going from range one to num rows plus one, just so that we have something that aligns with the example. So instead of being zero indexed, this is going to be indexed from one. And now we can initialize the variables we need to to keep track of the logic within our loop. So we needed to keep track of what the current row is. So we'll say, We'll start at row one because the first letter we're going to look at, regardless of what num rows is, that's going to be row one. And we'll figure out later how deep it goes in the loop. But we're going to initialize that to one. And we also have to keep track of whether we're currently moving up or down in the zigzag pattern, because that will tell us whether we should be incrementing the row by one or decrementing the row by one. So to start off with, we'll say up equals true. And now all we have to do is loop through the input string and then add to the appropriate row in our row map, whatever the current letter is based on what row we're currently in. So for letter in S, we're going to add to our row map the current row. So it starts with row one, but that will be changing plus equals our letter. So basically on the first iteration, we're at row one. So we're breaking off the first letter and we're storing that in row one in the row map. And then for the next iteration of the loop, maybe we're storing something in row two, row three, row four. Eventually we'll go back and start storing things in reverse order. So now we basically have to figure out how we are going to increment or decrement the row counter based on whether we're moving up or down. So first we'll handle the moving up case or moving to larger numbers, I should say. So if we're starting at one, or if we're currently at one, we should be increasing the row number. If we're ever in the first row, the next value is always going to be a higher row because the case where we had only one row, we already handled that by returning right away. So if the row is equal to one, and the other case where we're moving up is if we're already moving up, and we haven't gotten to the end of the zigzag yet. So the current row in that case is less than num rows. So or the current row is less 
then num rows and up. So basically we're saying we're moving up and we're still less than num rows. That also means we are in the moving up state. So in that case, we want to increase the row by one and up is going to be equal to true. And the reason we have to set up equal to true here is in the case where we just came back down to the first row, the up is probably going to be set to false at that point. So we need to set it back to up to say, okay, we're moving back up again now. So now all we have to do is handle the case where we're not moving up. We handled all the logic behind any time we need to move up. So that means otherwise we're just moving down. So else we're going to say row is decreasing minus equals one and up for now is false. So basically that's going to say anytime we're not supposed to be moving up, we're moving down. And in that case, up should be false. And this should take care of the kind of zigzag logic. So at the end of this for loop, our dictionary will have stored in each row, all of the letters that belong in that row. So now all we have to do is basically construct the converted output string from all of those substrings that are stored in the dictionary. So we can do that by looping through the rows one by one for the number of rows there are. And for each one of those, just extract those saved substrings. So we'll say converted equals empty string. And this will be what we're going to return, but we're just going to build it up from those substring results that we have stored so far. So now we'll say for row in range one, num rows plus one. So we're looping through all of the rows that we had stored in row map. Now there's actually something in there. We'll say converted plus equals row map of that row. So basically all this is doing is going through each row that we know we have, extracting the substring that we had saved as being for that row, and then concatenating it or adding it onto this final converted string. So this should be the final string we need to return for this. So let's say, say return converted. And I'm going to go ahead and click submit on this one. And if we didn't make any coding errors, it should hopefully be a working solution. So let's go ahead and pull over to see our result here. So you can see that the submission did pass. We got a runtime of 52 milliseconds, which was faster than about 88% of other Python 3 submissions. So that seemed like a reasonably efficient solution to this problem. If you found this video useful, you can drop a like or hit subscribe. Thanks for watching and keep coding.